John, I, like most people, really wonder about life after death. It just seems incredible mm. that the conscious existence that I have, that anybody has, will permanently and forever disappear and go blank. And so we like to try to find things. Mm. Sometimes we read into things. Um, most scientists would think that it's absolutely absurd mm to talk about life after death, the brain dies, disintegrates, you got nothing to, mm -hmm. to do. Most of those people are atheists. You're an atheist. Mm -hmm. And yet, you're not quite as willing as others mm -hmm. to dismiss life after death. Why is that? I've gone back and forth on this afterlife question. Um, I feel the tug that you mentioned from science and from the, the great influence that science has in our culture. But precisely because of how great that influence is, I'm also inclined to wonder whether there might be something that we're missing and to be open uh, to at least thinking about how it could be such a thing as life after death. Um, there are various other influences that, that have me a skeptic on the issue as opposed to a disbeliever. Um, one of them concerns uh, the question of the consciousness, what consciousness really is. If we had a handle on that, if we really knew what consciousness is, if we could say, you know, with, with proper confidence, appropriate confidence, being able to back up what we're saying, that consciousness is entirely reducible to, to you know, some, something about the physical brain, um, then, then perhaps I would have to be a, a disbeliever instead of a skeptic. But I think that we still may have a very long way to go in trying to understand consciousness. And consciousness, of course, is at the heart of the afterlife question. So if I'm a skeptic about the nature of consciousness, how can I help but be a skeptic? about the afterlife instead of a disbeliever. By skeptic, I mean that I'm in doubt about it. I don't mean that I, that I think negatively of it. Um, I'm in doubt about it. I'm uncertain. Um, and something else that makes me uncertain is related to the point that I've just made, and that is that we're still at a very early stage in this whole process of intelligent inquiry on our planet. Uh, part of my thinking about that, about our our place in time, our very early place in time, has led me to be a skeptic about a, an important religious proposition, which I call ultimism, which is the claim that there is a reality that is uh, ultimate, both in the nature of things, in value, and in what it can contribute to, to the value of our own lives. All right. I'm a skeptic for various reasons about that religious claim. But that religious claim entails that there is an afterlife. This is one of the interesting features that it has. You might think that it's barren of content, that it's just empty by comparison with something like theism. But one of the implications I've had to face up to, one of the implications of ultimism is that there is an afterlife for at least some of us. Why? Well, because it just strains credulity to think <laughs> that some of the people who have lived on this planet, who have died perhaps very early, who have lived very horrendous lives, uh, one sort or another, that they should really have had uh, access to, to soteriological ultimacy, just, you know, it strains credulity, right? So if there really is a soteriological ultimate, uh, a religious ultimate, then there must be an afterlife. That's an implication. And so if I'm skeptical about ultimism, I'm going to be skeptical as well about uh, this matter of the afterlife, which is all bound up with it. Because you need an afterlife, potentially, to make your ultimism have any, any teeth to it. Yeah, what does it need to have teeth? Well, it needs at least not to be such that we should believe it to be false. <laughs> A very fair. minimal condition. Um, and I think that's really all you need, because so long as you don't believe it to be false, if you're in doubt about it, it is an appropriate object of what I call uh, skeptical faith. Well, you could have an ultimism that just has a metaphysical foundation sure. that the universe or the laws of mm. physics or have some brute fact existence and there's nothing else yep. behind it, that there is no values in the world, everything is all chance, and that uh, we therefore have no personal mm. connection, human beings are active. You could have what would properly be called an ultimate reality that way. It would just be a thinner one, a metaphysically ultimate reality of the yeah. sort that even science is seeking. All sure. right? But you wouldn't have what satisfies the description of what I'm calling ultimism. I've given a name to this claim that it needs a name because people have often distinguished between religious claims like theism and the more general idea that there's something. They say there's something. So your ultimism I've is, given a name to is it's a, a religious claim. It's a religious claim. Yeah. It's, a, it's a divine claim, but it's not a theistic claim. Right. That's right. 
And and before that, you absolutely need a, 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 a an afterlife to make. Well, as I see it now, I mean, uh, if but somebody could show me about the whole show, if somebody could show me that ultimism could be true without any afterlife, I, I might be comforted by that. Strangely enough, because you might think I'd want there to be an afterlife, uh, but intellectually, I might be comforted by that precisely because of what we started out talking about the the way in which science makes it so hard for us to. <laughs> to believe in an afterlife at all. But I think looking at things properly with the philosophical attitude of wanting to understand for its own sake, not to build up any ideology, whether that be religious or naturalistic, I think we ought to be skeptics instead. But if your ultimism has a religious claim to it, yes. how can you have a religious claim, knowing the world as it is, mm. without an afterlife? Well, that's what I find very hard to see, and that's why I say that I think, at present, <laughs> that ultimism entails that there is an afterlife, or at least some of us. I mean, some of us have a pretty good go at things in this life, uh, but plenty of us don't. Um, and so there would need to be an afterlife in order for the potential of such individuals to have any hope of being realized. And I think that religion promises that the potential of all of us at least can be realized. I go with you to the conclusion, except I can't differentiate. You can have the greatest life in the world. You could be the king uh -huh. of Persia for 80 years or 100 years. Yeah. And if you're losing eternity, that, that's as, if, as mm. if nothing. So afterlife is for everybody or for no, nobody. Everybody or nobody. Life. Okay, I can see why you might go that, that route. There's a specific reason, though, for thinking that ultimism entails an afterlife that does distinguish between some of us and others. And that's the reason that I have been emphasizing. But there might be other reasons too.